Hello and happy Forensic Science Week. I'm Eric Ray from the Double Loop Podcast with some fingerprint comparison challenges this week. Uh, this example has tons of information in it but can be challenging even for experts to work through uh, because there's this big difference that just stands out really obviously. If you're brand new to fingerprint comparisons, there are other videos on this YouTube channel that will walk you through the basics of how to mark things up and definitely recommend that you download the image if you're going to do that. You can get it from Twitter at Double Loop Pod or if you're just uh, trying to change if you're just uh, trying this out for fun, you can pause this video and start plotting points, uh, keeping track of things on both images by using two pencils, turning them around, putting the erasers on the screen, and just keeping track of where you are in both prints as you look back and forth. So big questions, are the similarities uh, enough to overwhelm the big difference? Ident or exclusion? I'm gonna begin using just one color as I work through this. I'm gonna start by marking everything up that I see in the left and then looking for those features uh, in the right. All right, so here we go. Uh, I really like marking uh, the middle, the, the center of the cores, the innermost recurving loop, even though it's not a traditional ending or bifurcation feature. There's a lot of incipient ridges around here. I'm gonna skip marking those and just go for the endings and bifurcations. So we have an ending. Looks like another pair of endings. That might be an incipient ridge, uh, but I'll mark that anyway. Going out here, bifurcation and ending right next to each other. Another bifurcation, ending, ending, ending. Lots of stuff to work with, and there'll be a lot to count here at the end. But uh, I, I know this print, so I really want to you know, fully demonstrate all the uh, the similarities that are are here because there is this big difference. Uh, now, there is a, there has been debate going on for decades in the uh, fingerprint community about this idea of explainable difference or the one dissimilarity rule or the one discrepancy rule, which states that if there's one difference that you can't explain, then just by definition it becomes a, quote, discrepancy, and then you can't identify it. Or maybe even you have to exclude it, depending on how that, that rule is phrased and who taught an examiner that rule. Uh, but it's not actually an, a, a rule, an official kind of rule, or at least not anymore. Uh, it, um, it's definitely fallen out of favor not uh, generally taught anymore, and more importantly, it doesn't have any scientific backing. Uh, and there's been writings on uh, on this going back decades and decades, the, the most obvious one being by John Thornton back in 1977, uh, saying that that to, uh, to insist on an, explain, an explanation for a difference is really just encouraging examiners to make up an explanation and isn't really um, a, a true test of the difference between a, uh, a, sim a, a discrepancy and a difference. Uh, if that's really the only, only you know, definitive difference is that when you can explain a difference but you can't explain a discrepancy, well then that's just the same thing that you're just making up an explanation for. All right, so I think that's uh, enough to get going with. There is a whole lot you know, of kind of squishiness in this area that I'll skip over for now uh, because of just how much overwhelming uh, number of points we have everywhere else. So let me zoom back in, and we'll go right back to the core, the innermost recurve right there. And then coming up, skip one to the second right there, skip another one to that short ridge right here coming out to the right one two three and four join one two three and four join and then the ending coming back from that ending down and in one well now we got into this difference area we'll come back to that uh so back to the core coming uh all the way down one two going way down one oh we can't we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's try that one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've got a couple points marked down here, for these two, that just aren't going to be in the known because that part of the skin just didn't happen to touch. So it's not a difference, it's not a problem, it's just 
we can't count those points as a similarity or a difference. All right, so um, and in fact, what I'll do is um, is erase these points that just aren't going to be there uh, in the uh, in the other uh, image that we're dealing with. So in one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, skip one to that one there, up and in to that ending. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again, we're we're getting into an area where we're missing some stuff. So I'll get that one. But um, anything else down in this area, I, uh, I'm going to just erase as uh, just not the same overlapping uh, region. You know, just that area of the print didn't didn't happen to touch for uh, for both of them, so they don't get to count. Uh, so in and down one, I got that. Back up, skip one to that right there. One, two, up and over. One, two, right there, just right across that other ridge, right in here. Um, down one and in, we can see it just poking through. It's not the weightiest, most convincing point, but uh, we'll, we'll give that one a mark and then uh, get rid of the other ones as again, not being uh, represented on uh, the impression on the other side. So um, from here, one, two, one, two. Up one right there, back in. Oh, let's see. Did I count this right? So the points there. Uh, I see what's going on. I'm just going to have to move this point. It, being now that we're in the kind of beginnings of the squishy region, region uh, this ridge actually continues through, and this is the ridge that stops. So I was off by a ridge there. Uh, my my saving an original version and then a, this final marked up version um, of uh, of this comparison would when you know, demonstrate that I had to move a couple of these points because my initial interpretation of exactly where they were were off by a ridge here and half a ridge here but going from this one up one two three four five six one two three four five six the other end of that enclosure Skip a ridge to an ending. One, two, three, four. To that guy. Back one, two, three to a bifurcation. Over to the ending and bifurcation of a little spur. Both ends of this short ridge. One, two, three, four to that bifurcation. From the short ridge. And again, I'll, I'll just move this down just a bit just so it's easier to see that's the same down one to that ending here um, skip one. Oh, now again we're, we're in the squishy zone so some a couple of these points are are actually distortion and not real points so we'll get rid of those um, and back over here just to Get rid of the ones that again weren't on the the same area of the skin, so we're not counting those. Okay, so we got quite a few. Let's go into now this um, this region here with the big um, the big problem. Um, I may be able to pick up one more here. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And. Yeah, all this is, you see how it goes back and forth and there's there's um, things that kind of skip over through the furrows, fuzzy areas where things, you, know, you can't distinguish clearly, ridge versus furrow, other stuff kind of coming over here. It's just the way that the print was rolled uh, in the ink and then onto the paper uh, causes... Uh, you know, a little just uncertain 
lower clarity uh, issues right here. So we're going to stay out of this and stick with uh, the clear areas, but we do need to now address what's going on in here. Um, so when we last left off in this area, we had these two points corresponding to these two right here, and then a whole lot of what's going on in this formation as the ridges curl around, and here obviously they go straight down. So before getting into what may have happened here, because uh, that's really secondary to this difference compared to all the uh, these similarities. So let's count up what we have uh, here so far. Now it's not necessarily about the number of points and any fingerprint examiner that you ask about number of points will, will give you that answer, but the number of points is the most important thing. It's just not the only thing. Uh, so let's, let's get a general idea of what we're dealing with here. So there's uh, 7, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 23, 26, 29, 30. So we got 30 points uh, spread out. Oops. I oh, forgot those two. Um, oh, I forgot a couple here in the middle. I'm just trying to go so fast through this for you guys that uh, that I missed a couple here in the middle. Okay. Um, what are, one, two, 30, oh, 34 or so. Um, so we got those, those 30 semi points uh, corresponding and then this difference here. Now those 30 some odd points are, are really clear. They're spread from the, the base through the center up to the tip of the fingerprint, but there is this difference off to the side. Uh, so in a modern sense, evaluating everything in totality, all of these similarities, and we could even pick out more looking at these incipient ridges uh, if we really wanted to, uh, you know, are sufficient to reach an identification conclusion. Now this big uh, difference uh, coming through here uh, is is definitely something to observe and something to try to figure out what happened, what's going on, but the difference is overwhelmed by all the similarities here that are found uh, matching. This amount of features in this uh, arrangement, in this very specific arrangement, uh, is, is just not going to be found replicated uh, in another individual or is so extremely unlikely that, uh, I mean, you just win the lottery every day for the rest of your life, kind of unlikely. Uh, so going back, then there's, uh, there is this, this urge to explain what happened here. Again, explaining this is not the point. The point is that the similarity outweighs this difference. But it does help uh, to you know consider what's going on here, especially if you have, if you have to explain it to a non-expert. And very subtly, very very subtly, there is a little bit of puckering right here. And if you follow that pucker, which generally indicates a scar along this area right here, um, there is a very slight indication that uh, there was some sort of scarring happening there and that when the finger healed, uh, things just happened to line up in this looping and delta formation, but not where you would normally expect to find a loop or a delta. Uh, so there isn't a whole lot of, um, uh, of evidence for that scar as opposed to just this little puckering area but the overwhelming number of points of similarity uh, outweigh this difference to result in an ID. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. A little more work to do and a little more uh, complicated to get into explain, working through this difference. And uh, we'll come back with a more difficult one uh, tomorrow and yet hardest one still on Friday to finish out Forensic Science Week. Thanks for watching.